Right, I'm about ready to start adding some colors in. I've taken a close look at my picture right up at the very top really looking close. One nice thing about magazines is if you look close enough you can really pick out the colors that were used to print this thing. So you can kind of cheat out of a magazine and that's one of the main reasons why we're using magazine clippings for this project so that we can take a careful look. I've looked up in there it's kind of a kind of an off blue. I see some purples up in there. I see some blues um, and it's it gets kind of dark towards the top so I'm going to throw in a little bit of red. I know that red and blue make violet so those two are going to come together and really make up this color here. Good to get the project going. I'll just grab a handy little blue get this thing started. I know that I need to do a lot of tapping so instead of tapping straight up and down though because that doesn't leave much of a mark I'm going to tap a little bit at an angle. Alright, I've tapped in a little bit. Notice that I've left a lot of space in between. I didn't just fill it in solid with blue. And that's because I know I'm going to be building this up with a lot of different colors. After looking at it, I've got these three colors that I'm going to work into this area. I'm going to add more and maybe um, take some of these out as the project moves along. But these are some pretty good starters. Next I'll throw some red in. I want it to be down underneath the blue so I'm going to do this fairly early. Tap in a little bit of red down into these areas. There's red in the clouds too because that's orange. So I'm going to tap this in just a little bit down into here. I can come back with a little bit of yellow over the top, turn it to orange. Maybe a little pink. little light blue and just build it up. Alright, and that's starting to work out pretty well. I'll just continue to fill that in. Now I've started on the clouds already and the colors I'm choosing to use in the clouds are pretty much all the colors that I could find up and into them. I have four diff five different colors down here. I've got pink, violet, some red, some orange, and some yellow. Now I know my paper is yellow. I'm not really going to see much of the yellow, but this will work to blend out those oranges and blend out some of those pinks into a little bit more of a neutral color. In my, in my drawing here, you can very carefully see a lot of oranges up in there. You can see some areas where it gets very light. That's where I'm going to use most of my yellows. And on the fringes right out in here, you can see some purples too. So you can see those purples working around there and I'm going to make sure to put those in there. Now the orange, I know I can separate that orange out. I can use all the, I can use the orange, but the orange, the red, the pink and the yellow together will make that kind of orangish color. And then I just continue my job working this out. A little bit of orange over the top, pulling in some of that pink. just basically filling it in. Maybe a little bit of violet on here. I'm going to start working on my heels. I'm going to bring these down. Now this is my one chance that I really have to show form. So I've got to get it right to begin with. I'm looking at the colors. I'm going to choose those colors up. I see a lot of green in there but it gets very dark so I need to lay a coat of red down deep underneath and then I'll cover it up with the green. That'll neutral each other out or that'll kind of take all the color out and make it a very dark color as it works down in here. And as I'm looking at these hills I notice that the further away they get they turn a little bit lighter blue. So this one's going to have a little more blue. I know that blue colors recede. So I'm going to add some blue to this little hill right down here and then on this far mountain range here I'm going to add some light blue back into that so that this one's going to be light blue 
This one's going to be a darker blue, and then this one's going to be mostly red and green up in the foreground. All right, get things started off. I've chosen some of my colors. I've even thrown in a little bit of brown just for fun. It's, it's kind of a reddish brown, and I think that'll work out well. Now, like I said, I'm going to start these. These are my one chance to really show form. So I've got to change those directions, change the strokes. Now this hill slopes up this way. I think I'm going to start my, I'm going to very lightly pencil in a little mark so I know like what kind of direction I'm going to follow all, on, all of my marks. So I'm going to follow those slopes down. This is a little bit closer, so I'm putting a little bit longer marks down into it and filling this in with my red. Working the red in the direction that I set with that very first line. You could do that with a pencil if you need. So I'm putting that in, just little dash marks. I'm going to make sure that my heels stand out and have a lot of form in them. Come back over the top. Add some of that green. You can see how that green really turns those red marks very black right off the bat. So that's going to work that out. A little bit longer lines so that you can really see the direction that those heels take. So I can really work that form down in there. And I've got that form worked out. This next hill, come back in. This line, this one's going to come in kind of this way. So I'm going to work these directions, the direction of these marks, back into the hill. Add a little blue first. They're going to be smaller than that front hill in that direction. Maybe a little red over the top. Still going in that direction, changing the direction, trying to show that hill that it slopes down differently, and then bringing the green down in that last place. So this should turn out kind of a blue-green, darkish color as it works out. Up in the last hill, of course, that's where my light blue is going to come in. And because that's so far back, I think I'm going to use pretty much the same technique that I use for the sky. Just lots of little marks. Lots of little tapping, no real form because it's so far off. Even though if I needed to, I could work the directions up. Maybe I'd follow that same hill pattern. Up that way. Come back in with the green. And we should see a very light blue green as it gets up into that distance far off. All right. Alright, continuing work on it. I'm filling this in, being very careful to follow my form down this way. As my heels come down over on this side, you can see that they slope back into this one. And I've added a little bit of light blue up through this mountain range here. So that it, it gets a little bit bluer, and then even more blue up into this. So that sinks way back off into the distance. Worked a little bit more into my clouds, filling those out. I know that I have plenty of time to finish this up. There is a full week of tapping away at this thing. And in the end, I should have a fairly good project. Oil pastels do take a lot of time, but the project is rewarding. 